we are going through exercise 2.19 from the art of electronics and for this exercise we are looking at the miller effect and two different circuits that have been provided in the book so what i will do for this question is basically briefly describe to you what miller effect is i'll go through the two circuits explain to you how they work and how they negate the miller effect now this is a very open-ended question so if you have any comments to add for you know a full explanation or more to more detail on what i've explained please do so in the comment section below so exercise 2.19 says explain why there is no miller effect in either transistor configurations that are shown in one of the images below the question itself so the two circuits that the question is talking about are the following one is a differential amplifier where the base where you are taking the output of the amplifier basically a single ended output is grounded and the second transistor circuit is a amplifier called a cascode amplifier where we have a npn transistor connected in series with another npn transistor so what is the miller effect well basically it tells you of a situation where the effective capacitance between an input which is basically down here and the output over here so the capacitance being this parasitic capacitance of a npn transistor is effectively amplified by the gain of the transistor so let's say this capacitance value is one picofarad then due to the miller effect the effective capacitance between the input and the output would appear as 100 picofarads let's say if the gain of the amplifier is a hundred so the Miller effect obviously can increase the effective capacitance of this component which obviously if you have a high frequency signal going in or let's say audio then with a very high gain from the transistor then the parasitic capacitance or the capacitive effect from this component can be significant especially as you're amplifying it so that's why it needs to be considered for special cases but not for everything one thing to know is that the Miller effect is not only limited to the capacitance and can also affect resistance and inductance between an input and output as well. So anything that you have between a input and an output where you have some sort of amplification, there will be Miller effect on the components that are connected in between the two. So that is a very brief description of the Miller effect. Please feel free to expand on that in the comment section below and develop this answer further. Obviously, this is a very open-ended question. So let's just add as much detail as we can to the solution so first of all we're going to look at the differential amplifier circuit that's been given in the figure below the question and you can see the differential amplifier circuit on the screen now basically in this circuit the base of q2 is grounded so that creates a very low impedance source for q2 we are taking the output from the collector of q2 and we have a load resistor that's connected between the collector of Q2 and VCC, which is our power supply. The input signal is provided to Q1 through some source impedance, RS, and that is connected directly to VCC. So in this circuit, what happens is that you have a very low impedance source. So effectively, there's very low resistance between here and the parasitic capacitance that you will have between the base and the collector therefore the miller effect will be very low and you're also not driving a signal into this base as well on the other end where you are driving a input signal to the base you have basically tied the collector to the voltage line so the voltage line will be connected to a very low impedance obviously power supply so this collector point over here or the collector of q1 it's going to be relatively fixed and not move as the input signal moves. So that means that whatever is happening between the capacitance over here, so let's say you have some high frequency signal here, what's going to happen is that the collector voltage is not going to move with any input signal as that's going to be a very stiff connection to basically the power supply VCC. So to summarize, we have a grounded base on Q2. We have no collector resistance on Q1, basically fixing Q1 collector to a fixed voltage. So when the source voltage varies, the collector voltage on Q1 does not vary, which basically negates the Miller effect. And one of the other things that we noted was that the base input of Q2 has very low source impedance as it is connected to ground. Similar to the 
explanation for the Miller effect, please feel free to add your input for this question or this circuit on the comment section below so that we can get a full, you know, in detail explanation of what's going on with Miller effect and this circuit. The next circuit in the question, we are basically looking at a cascode amplifier, which is connected, as you can see on the screen here. So first of all, let me explain what is happening in this circuit. You have a NPN transistor Q1, which is connected uh, to basically the source coming from somewhere here. And the emitter is connected to ground. The collector of Q1 is connected to a secondary NPN transistor, which you can see over here on Q2. The base of Q2 is connected to a fixed value voltage source. In this case, it's described as a 3 volt voltage source over here. Now, if you look at how a NPN transistor works, then you can basically see that this point is going to be 3 volts, obviously. We're not describing how the 3 volts are generated, so we're going to assume it's very low impedance source that we are driving into the base. Then what you're going to have at the collector of Q1 or the emitter of Q2 is basically 3 volts minus the VBE voltage that you get basically over here. So the collector of Q1 is going to be fixed or relatively fixed to 3 volts minus 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts. So you're going to have roughly 2.4 volts or 2.3 volts on the collector of Q1. And obviously that's going to be relatively fixed. It does vary with temperature and things like that, but we can ignore that for the purposes of this question. So if the collector voltage of Q1 is fixed, then that will effectively negate the Miller effect that occurs between the base of Q1 and the collector of Q1 due to the capacitance between the two components. So whatever is happening over here, this point is not going to change and remain relatively fixed. Thank you for watching today. If you have any comments for me um, or the video itself, then please leave them in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, you know, share this video with your friends. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.